this one really got away from me. Okay folks, first of all I would like to welcome you to what is going to be quite a long video. I can tell just by looking at my other screen here at the number of clips of b-roll that I've got to add over this that it's going to take us a while to get through and with that I'm going to try and keep story time pretty short but as usual I will put a little thing up above somewhere to tell you where the painting starts if you don't want story time first. This was actually a challenge that was issued to me kind of by accident. A friend of mine on Twitter paints a lot of squigs and I've been a big fan of theirs squigs for some time. It's one of the things I always look forward to appearing on my timeline when I browse Twitter and I've been considering picking up like a Gloom Spike Gits box set or something because I really wanted to paint a squig and I happen to have just never painted one before. Well in a random act of generosity my friend decided to send me over some really cool old metal squigs. There was a couple of them, one was a bit damaged and uh, the other was already painted but they didn't need much TLC to get back into good shape, and I decided to paint one up, and the plan was to send it back to her. I say the plan was, the plan still is to send it back to her, but what I didn't plan on was how much I was going to get into it. Now, when I paint a miniature, typically I'm painting for a specific purpose. I'm painting because I want to make a tutorial, or I'm painting because it's a commission where there is a predetermined level of quality that the customer has asked me to deliver. It's not very often that I just get to free paint a piece, do kind of whatever I want with it, and end up kind of falling down a rabbit hole with it. That's a pretty unique experience for me, and I want to take you on the journey of the whole thing because... Although there were a lot of processes that went into this squig, there were a lot of processes because it was kind of just what I was in love with doing at the time and I just didn't want to stop painting it. So this has kind of accidentally turned into a bit of a masterclass and I don't really consider myself to be a master, so I don't really feel like I have any right to make a masterclass, but I cannot think of another way to frame a video where there's going to be 54, I'm looking at my other screen, separate pieces of b-roll showing different things that I've painted. So uh, it's time to sit down and strap in. This one is going to take a while. Let's paint a squig. So for step one in this process, from a black undercoat, we are going to first of all get base coated in Barak Nar Burgundy all over. You'll also notice that I'm skipping the colour names here like I normally put up, and that's just because this isn't really about recipes and stuff, it's more about just what I decided to do and why I decided to do it. If you wanted to know any of the colours that I've used for different workups on this, feel free to drop a comment below, and I will quite happily let you know what the colours are for any of the particular workups on this. And from that Barrack Nar, we're now going to start just glazing up gently with some Mephiston Red. This is always my favourite way to do anything that's kind of a bit spherical or a bit ball-y. I like to glaze up the colours so that you can get these kind of nice smooth stepped transitions. Okay, so by the point I've worked it up to sort of this stage where it's kind of looking, you know, pretty solid, pretty decent. I can now move on to the next colour. And that next colour is going to be some Evil Sun Scarlet. And again, just continuing the glazing, just heading up in brightness, shrinking down my highlights as you would normally see me do. And then even more glazing now with Wild Rider Red this time to really start to get that brightness to show through. Alright, now you can finally take a break from glazing if you're sort of painting along with this. Um, you can do some textured highlighting now, how's that sound? A bit of Jacaro orange for this one. And then I'm going to add in some sunny skin tone to that and you're going to notice a repeat theme developing through this video just to get some finer textured highlights just on the sort of tips and edges. So with that now fully textured up and looking fine, we're going to go back to glazing. Yeah, I said I got into this one, didn't I? 
So Mephiston red again this time, but glazing in the opposite direction this time, away from the highlights towards the shadows, and this acts to sort of counter blend them backwards and smoothen them off. And then just a tiny, tiny bit of Barrack Nar Burgundy glazed into the deepest recesses, again just to smooth the transition with the Mephiston red. Then we're going to tickle in just some final highlights, just some really, really bright little pinpoint ones with pure sunny skin tone, which is a colour I like. Then we'll mix sunny skin tone into Barrack Nar Burgundy, and we'll use this to highlight the gums. And then after a few highlights of all that, we can start striping some Mephiston red onto the lip. Then into that Mephiston Red, we can mix some sunny skin tone to stripe in some more highlights. And then after building all of that up for a bit, we're then going to use some Mephiston Red just to glaze around the lips and gums and those kind of areas to sort of pink them up a little bit. Pink them up. That's a nice term. For the eyeballs, we're going to use pure sunny skin tone. And that will just be the main colour for those. We will probably do a couple of other little bits as well. And some black for the pupils. And the pupils on the squig I'm actually going to do is kind of slits, not dots. Now for the goblin skin, I actually want to aim for something fairly pale. But I want a lot of depth to it. So I'm still starting off with Wah Flesh from GW. And now for the highlighting on the skin of the goblin, I'm just going to mix Wah Flesh and I'm going to build up highlights with a sunny skin tone until I get to something that I'm happy with. By about the halfway point through building that skin up, it's going to look something like this. And eventually, with a good bit of working up, it's going to end up looking something like this. Now we're going to demonstrate the power of a fantastic paint here. This is Sunny Skin Tone from Vallejo, mixed with black to highlight the robes. And once I've got those highlights where I want them, then I'll reinforce the recesses just with some thin glazes of black. I'm now going to base coat the rope belt on this guy with, uh, I think, Sunny Skin Tone. And then we'll give that an all-over application of Seraphim Sepia. A little bit of Selective Agrax Earthshade will just deepen the shading in a few areas. And then back to a colour that I haven't used very much in this work, work up, uh, Sunny Skin Tone for the highlights. Next up, let's get some XV88 onto the tops of his little booties. And then some Mournfang Brown onto the soles of the boots, but also onto the teeth of the goblin and the teeth of the squig. Some thinned down Agrax Earthshade gives us a nice shade for the boots. We'll come back to the teeth shortly. First, we're going to highlight up these boots just using the base coats and then starting to mix in some Sunny Skin Tone. Okay, now that that's all taken care of, let's base coat in the horns and the toenails with a pure white colour. This is Dragon White from Reaper Master Series here, and it is a pure bright white colour that will cover black in two coats. I highly recommend you grab yourself a bottle. We're going to start striping the horns towards the tips now with Jack Bone from P3. And then we'll step in a little bit and we'll do some slightly finer stripes still heading towards the tips with P3 Beast Hide. Incidentally, Beast Hide is also our first highlight for the teeth, that's worth bearing in mind. However, the next horn colour is going to be Mournfang Brown. The very tips of the horns will be taken care of with some Rhinox Hide, and you might think that that's everything, but we're not actually quite done there. But we're just going to nip back to those teeth first for uh, a little bit of highlighting with some Jackbone. You know what? I'll even add a little dab of white to these teeth, just to really get some highlights going. 
Right, back onto those horns again then. So I'm going to filter over the entire horn with Seraphim Sepia now. This is going to pull all of those colours sort of together, make the transitions a little bit less obvious, and also just give it that kind of yellow aged look. We'll also get some Seraphim Sepia on the teeth, and again, this is just to promote that sort of yellowed look that we want. While that wash is drying, I'm going to get just the first coat of flock on the base. I'm planning to use some new stuff on this base, and I just wanted to sort of be prepared for that without having to wait ages at the end. Right, let's get some Avalon Sunset onto the uh, hooded cowl. Some heavy glazes of Mournfang Brown will give us a nice shade on that. For a highlight, I was a little bit stuck on what to choose, so I just decided to go with uh, Sunny Skin Tone. And then just added a little, you know, touch of white into that for a final highlight. Then at this point, I realised I'm an idiot and I forgot to paint the tail on the squig, so it's back to Barracknar Burgundy to base coat the tail. Then a little Bugman's Glow just to sort of stripe in some highlights. And then I'm going to mix a, sort of a brighter highlight just to do a final step for this with, uh, I think, some sunny skin tone sounds nice. We're going to skip through a few things now, just some bits that I did off camera. I'll explain why. First of all is this non-metallic metal gold. And secondly is this rusty axe head. Now I'm mostly skipping these for brevity, but also I want to kind of do some updated tutorials on my NMMs. However, what I am going to show you is these beautiful flower tufts from Rival Crafts that I'm fixing to the base. I went pretty tuft crazy on the base here because I've just done a big Rival Crafts order. And I've just done a big Rival Crafts order because I am now a Rival Crafts affiliate. So if you like their stuff and you want to check it out, there will be a link in the description. However, after that lengthy slog, and thank you, if you managed to bear with this entire video, thank you for sitting through it, because we are now complete, and we can now go to the Lazy Susan, and I can now give you a look at this finished squig hopper. So folks, what did you think of our Squig Hopper? Did you like the kind of old school vibe, the choice to paint an old metal one? Would you have preferred to see one of the newer plastic ones? Do you think sticking with the classic colour scheme was a good idea? Or do you prefer some of the more alternate, crazy, wacky Squig colour schemes? Personally, I can't make my mind up if I have a favourite, to be honest. I love the red Squig with the black and yellow rider. But then at the same time, I see so many imaginative takes on Squigs. And they kind of all just rock. However, whatever your feelings are on the colour scheme and the way I painted it, don't forget that if you liked that video, you can hit the thumbs up button to let me know that you liked it. You can also subscribe to the channel and enable notifications if you want to stay up to date on what I'm doing here on YouTube. If you love the content and you want to support its creation, there is a Patreon campaign that starts from just $1 a month, and there's links to that and all my social media in the description. So I'm going to get out of here now. I've enjoyed my little passion project this week. I've got quite a lot of busy things to be getting my head down with soon. So it was nice to just stretch my arms a bit and do something purely for fun. I really do hope you enjoyed it, folks. Let's roll those own credits. I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching, everyone. And bye for now.